Okay, for part of the lesson on states of matter is looking at a phase change diagram. You can see here that this um, diagram here is temperature versus time. Sometimes here you will see heat or energy. So if it doesn't have time here, it has heat or energy. So um, on this graph, Sometimes in place of time, you will see heat or energy. So um, this, these numbers would represent the amount of heat that's increasing. And a lot of times you may not have numbers on this bottom part here. So on this graph, you see that we start at, with a substance here and the graph is increasing to this point. When it flat lines, it's staying the same then it's increasing again, then it's flatlining, and it's increasing again. All right, so as time goes on, you see that it is slowly rising up in the chart where the temperature is concerned. So temperature is increasing this way, time is increasing this way. So let's go through this just to give you some ideas of what's going on in this graph. So at point A, the beginning of the, is the beginning of the observations. The substance exists as a solid. So right here, we have solid. Material in this phase has a definite volume and a definite shape. With each passing minute, heat is added. We know that temperature is being increased. Um, this causes the molecules of the substance to move or vibrate more rapidly, which we detect by a um, rise in the substance. I guess it's increased rise in the substance. Um, increase temperature rise, sorry, temperature rise in the substance. At point B, the temperature of the substance is, well, if you look at point B and you draw a little line straight across, you see that it's between 60 and 80. Well, halfway between 60 and 80 is going to be 70. So at point B, the temperature is 70 degrees. The solid begins to melt at this point. So this would be considered melting point. At point C, the substance is completely melted or in a liquid state. So at point C, on up, it is a liquid. Um, material in this phase has a definite volume but an indefinite shape because it will take on the shape of the container that it's in. The energy put to the substance between minute five, so minute five right here, and minute nine was used to convert the substance from a solid to a liquid. Um, a lot of times you'll see this labeled as heat of fusion. Um, and sometimes you may see this labeled here as melting. So this could be, if you're going this way, this is going to be melting. We also know it as heat of fusion. Between nine and 13, which is this increase here, the added energy increases the movement of the substance during the time from point D to point E, the liquid is, I want to say it's evaporating or vaporization, I think is what it's called, vaporizing. 
Um, by point E, the substance is completely in the gas phase. So here, this would be the um, vaporation point, boiling point is what we call it. Then this is um, vaporization. Sometimes we call it evaporation. And then here, it's a gas. So material in this phase has indefinite volume and indefinite shape. The energy put to the substance between 13, which is right here, and 18 converts the substance from a liquid to a gas. We call this heat of vaporization. Um, so you may see this as ev vaporization, you may see it as evaporation, um, you may see it as heat of vaporization. And um, beyond point E, the substance is still in the gas phase, but the molecules are moving um, very fast. So this is the basic way you read one of these graphs. In your worksheet that you're going to do, you're going to have to label one of these. And down here at the bottom, it says which three substance was likely used in this phase change experiment. So let's look at melting point. We said melting point was 70 degrees. So I'm gonna look and see. Well, so far it's this one. Well, let me look at boiling point. Boiling point was D, D is 140, and it matches that. Um, so, we have, this is the substance that matches this graph. Um, so this is just an example of how, what a phase graph looks like. So what you're going to, the sheet that you're going to have um, to be working on is gonna look like this. Um, you're given the definitions here of a solid, liquid, and gas. You're gonna fill this in from which phase to which phase. And then the second page, there are two ways of looking at this graph, all right? The bottom one is similar to what I just went over. And so you're gonna fill in the labels for these spots that I have here. Up here, there are blanks, and it's sort of the same way. So start for at a solid, all right? When a solid goes to a liquid, what do we call that? If a liquid goes to a solid, what do we call that process? Um, if a liquid goes to a gas, what do we call that process? If a gas goes to a liquid. Now four and five, you may have to look up because it may not have been in the video that I posted or it wasn't in what I had talked about. Um, if you have a gas and it goes back to a solid or a solid that goes to a directly to a gas. So this, an example of this is, um, is it carbon dioxide that kept under certain pressure? It makes the fog for um, different, um, it may not be carbon dioxide. It's, it's, anyway, it's a gas that is kept solid under pressure and temperature. And when you open the container, it immediately turns into fog, which is a gas. And so three, four, and five, you may have to look up um, on the internet to find those terms. Um, but you just need to be familiar with this. I like this bottom graph because you see that a solid, they're all kind of stuck together in a specific shape. When you get to a liquid, they are unconnected but loosely together, and in a gas, they're further apart. Um, so for part of states of matter, after you complete the lab, you'll have this little phase change worksheet to look at. Um, in the lab, there's um, asking you to either describe or draw. 
So using the tools in Kami as best you can, try to draw if you prefer, or um, you can write a description. There's a way to, you know, you can always describe with words. Um, I hope this video helps you with this.